I guess you can call this a piece of art, but really it's just a moment in time. It looks kind of weird, but I'm using this lovely new device that the cast pitch in to buy me since you know, things were stolen, my phone, my iPad, my... The nice thing about the new iDevice is, well, it's got video capabilities. So I'm finally clean and back from midsummers, and I haven't had a chance to really try this out yet, so I thought I would. Right now Martin's in the shower and I've got this moment of silence as I lit a candle and started thinking about things. And the dominant thing on my mind should be the time I had at Midsummers and the plans I have for PPF if they're going to work and my career and my fellow actors and all the great people that I had a chance to talk to down at Midsummers and trying to figure out where things are and, you know, be a good organizer and be fair and hear all sides of every story and blah, 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 blah. It's exhausting and it's tough. And you kind of realize that a piece of you just kind of goes away with it. You know, you spend so much time trying to see things from everyone's point of view and not everyone's telling you everything and other people are telling you more than you really need to know. and. Then something else hit me. This morning as we're sitting in the backyard of American Friend's house, an American friend who has shown us as Canadians incredible respect and joy and happiness. He's come to our festival every year and hell, he even learned how to play O Canada on his guitar. Good man. And his wife, lovely lady, she took us in whenever we needed to, whenever we go to the festival, whenever we have to have a space. She's right there, willing to feed us and welcome us. So here we are in this backyard in Washington State, eating breakfast. Tanya comes out of the house with her cell phone in hand and says, quite straight-faced, Jack Layton's dead. Well, a lot of thoughts went through my, my mind, but I dismissed him really quick. He had cancer, and I guess he lost the battle that or someone's playing a really cruel joke. So I'll deal with it when I'm back in my country because right now we have to get packed and we have to head home. So we're driving back. I'm trying to weigh in my head thoughts of, of my own politics, so to speak, and thoughts of this great political man that I admire so much. And But, you know, I, I had to focus on getting home, so I'm driving and driving. Then we get to the border, and I'm looking around me, and the Canadian flag is at half-mast, and... Every single vehicle coming into the country is Canadian. All of them. Alberta, BC. There was one that I think was from Nova Scotia or somewhere. Somewhere really far. But not a single American played amongst the bunch. And so just thinking, oh, hey, I'm coming back into my own country. It's no big deal. These are all us. All I can think of is, oh, my God. It's like we're all coming home for him. I didn't even think about the fact that, you know, it's Monday, it's after work, it's... A lot of people were probably at their friends over the weekends. No. It literally felt like we were coming home in the morn. So... Here, instead of writing it out, I thought I'd test my new device and the candle's lit. You know, we can sit here all we want and criticize politicians or politically minded people. We can we can expect us to be inhuman and we can expect us to be 
manipulating when we're trying to be human. Politics exists on so many levels, whether it's the smallest fan group or the biggest country or it doesn't matter. This man passed away with cancer and when you would expect him to be still doing his job, he writes this letter to our country. It's online. Take a peek. Jack Layton. Last words. And I'm sure there's someone out there reading them and going, it's just a political move. It's all bull crap. But what I read is the kind of things that I know I want to say. And in my little world, and the kind of things I know a lot of my friends and their realities want to say and it's a lot of stuff that I know a lot of people need to say and I see honesty and I see love I see a man who used to be my next door neighbor so to speak no he is technically yeah same complex same block same neighborhood even as he went up in politics he still showed up for all the co-op festivals and You know, I see a man who my parents shook hands with and talked about things, talked about our future, and, or the park, or the taxes, or whatever each parent was consumed with in that moment. I see this guy who went from just a neighbor who was concerned about all of us to a man who almost wound up in charge of a whole country. It's going to hit a little harder than some people would hit me if they had died of cancer. But definitely puts a spin on it. Um, a few people in my life have died of cancer. and They've been very, very special. I'm not discrediting them, but... This is different. This neighbor almost ran this country and the only thing that stopped him was cancer and even then he still goes out of his way to leave a legacy behind so what's in store for me what's in store for other people who run groups or troops or productions or what's in store for the bigger dreamers what's going to stop us if I'm stopped by something like cancer, if tomorrow I wake up and that's what happens, I want to go out wonderful. Jack, I'm not sure if you remember this little kid. Because the last time I probably talked to you in person, I was a little kid. Guys, he's yeah. I'm forty-three. And he's he died at sixty-one. So yeah, I was a little kid. <laughs> Must have been like ten when I first met him. Don't know if you remember me. It's a long, long time ago. I don't remember the last time I saw you face to face. I think I was a young adult. But listen, if somehow you're watching this, thanks. Really, seriously, thanks. I think I got a new lease on life. I know I'm talented, and I know I fight hard for my talent. I'm going to try to listen more and build a healthier life for me. I'm going to listen to the universe and a lot of things you said. Your last words are now my um, opening screen. So yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Hopefully the right people see this, I guess. I could keep it private, but I don't want to. 
Mr. Jack Layton, you're an inspiration, you're a motivator, and of anyone else I've ever watched or listened to, you've got to be one of the most inspirational, most motivational, and it's a shame such a horrible disease took you so early. People read his letter. Take it to heart. I don't care if you're Canadian, American, European. This man knew what he was fighting for. And he did it right. I gotta go. Sounds like Martin's finished his shower and I think I need a moment alone.